Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and these are the three, actually four big stories for today because I'm going to do a little bonus. So we're going to start with this. Zelensky visits the location of 117th Separate Territorial Defense Brigade in Sumy region. President Zelensky visited the location uh, as a part of a working trip to the Sumy region. Now, I want you to think, when you've seen in the media, when Zelensky or his generals go to the front line, what do they do? And then think in your mind about when Putin or one of the Russian generals go to their front line, I mean, if they're actually going to the front line, what do they do or how is that covered? So when Zelensky goes, you see things like the head of state is inspecting the command post and they're supposed to do that. The Russians do that. But the Russians, it's usually framed in, and, and Sergei Shoigu gave these orders that, or this general gave this order, or they're waiting for Putin. We inform Putin so that this can happen, right? It's always that something like that, like waiting for him to do this. In contrast, you generally see that the president spoke to the defenders of Ukraine and thanked them for their daily service. He's handing out awards, thanking them with a heartfelt thank you. It's just such a contrast between those two. Putin's inner circle does not believe that Ukraine is involved in a Moscow attack, according to Bloomberg. Well, he can say what he wants to say about it. That's fair. But that doesn't mean that even his inner circle is going to believe him. A Bloomberg article reported that Russian President Vladimir Putin's inner circle does not believe his rhetoric that Ukraine was behind the Moscow attack. According to the four people with close ties to the Kremlin who wish to stay anonymous, why they wish to stay anonymous, due to the subject's sensitivity, nearly no one they know within Russia's political and business elite believes Ukraine was behind the Kroka City Hall attack, which took the lives of 139 people, Bloomberg reported. And look, hey, if you control the media, you can even say it in the media and spread that far and wide and then have your guy say this. In response to the Bloomberg article, Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson, Maria Zakharova, called it the mother of all fakes. How about that? Right? But that doesn't mean that they believe it even still. Okay. So next thing. Yesterday, I talked about this. I talked about the, how clever the Ukrainians were. They grabbed 8,000 cell phones, put them on six-foot poles all over the country, and then they could triangulate on the cell phone reception signal when they hear rockets going over. And one of my viewers uh, told me about this. From your big three stories today, uh, some police departments have used a system of sensors to detect gunshots to triangulate where the gunshots came from. And then I, I looked it up because I was intrigued by it. And sure enough, National Institute for Justice Research Preview uh, Shot Spotter uses a triangula triangulation algorithm to pinpoint the location of apparent gunfire and allows users to replay the sound of the gunfire noise. How about that? Didn't know that was a thing, but it's a thing. Now, the Ukrainians are even smarter than that. This just came out today. After drones, smartphone apps are Ukraine's next secret weapon. So they have now an app called the EPO, EPPO, that allows ordinary citizens to report sightings of incoming Russian aerial weapons. All they have to do is hit the app, point it to where it's going, and press a button, and it will alert. And so all these pings will help them triangulate on where that's coming from. Now, if you really wanted to be... I, if Ukraine really wanted to be part of Russia, nobody would be using that app. But because they don't want to be, the population is set against Russia, and that's going to be very hard to overcome. It's also going to be hard for the Russians when a uh, Russia increase is uh, gasoline imports from Belarus as its domestic supplies shrink. So the targeting of oil refineries is having an effect. Okay, that's the fourth story. Thank you for your time, the likes, shares, and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.